In this video, I want to look at an example of how set operations can occur in normal discourse. In particular, what I want to do is to uh, illustrate how the use of set, op set operations can make requests for information more precise. Now, I've pulled up a typical kind of data set here about some company it gives financial information. Uh, you can think of these uh, we're thinking of elements just uh, like from we did before, before from 1 to 10, but now these are companies that are called A, B, C, D, E, and so forth. And I have uh, price information of a share of stock, what their dividend yields are, one year and five years growth. Okay, now typically if you have uh, information like this, you would want to ask some questions about these. Okay, so I want to focus on these questions first. We'll come back to the... To the uh, companies. All right, so one question might be, uh, what are the companies that had a positive growth in the last five years and a dividend yield of more than 3%? So let's break this into its little pieces. It's separated by the and here. There's two conditions. One is a positive growth in the last five years. So let's designate uh, uh, F as the set of the companies that had that satisfied that uh, that condition. And then let's look at the other. The dividends of yield of more than 3%, well, let's call that D. And these two conditions are combined by the AND connective. So this is just going to be the set of companies that F intersect D. That's the way we would uh, use the set operations to designate the, the set that's specified by the total condition. Okay, let's look at the second uh, criteria here. Uh, we were interested in companies with a positive growth in the last five years. Well, now we've already seen uh, that's going to be F. Okay, but not last year. So this is going to be F what? Well, the but is just another way of saying and. Okay, so we can intersect there. Not is another connective last year. Well, what is not last year? Well, I guess they did not have a positive growth last year. So let's designate a set here, L, consisting of the companies that had a positive growth last year. Okay, so, but we're interested in not that set. So this would be F intersect L prime would be the way we would designate the set of companies described by this condition. All right, let's look at the third one here. Companies that had a positive growth last year, well, we just introduced the notation L to talk about this set of companies. Okay, or now here's a different connective. Or what? Or a dividend yield of more than 3%. So this was a D. So how do we describe the uh, total condition here? Well, it's going to be L or is the union. Remember, it's you're putting things together. Uh, you want to merge both of the sets together. So this is just going to be L union D. Uh, what about the last condition down here. Well, we see now one of the criteria is that the companies had to cost less than $50 a share. Well, that looks like a new uh, condition. So C uh, would be the companies that uh, share price uh, is uh, less than $50. Yeah, that's now. OK, so if we start out this, we'll talk about C here. But now here's this but, so that's going to be an intersection. And then as we read along, it says either. Well, whenever we see an either, we look for an or. Because now what that means is that the either or is going to express the components of this as a union. So here's the place for the union. And what do we want to put in each of the clauses here? Well, either what? Had positive growth last year, well, positive growth last year, that was going to be the L. Or what? A dividend yield of at most 3%. Well, we got to be a little careful here. This says at most. When we talked about D, it was a dividend yield of more than 
greater, that's greater than 3. At most, 3% means up to 3%. So this will actually be the complement of, of E. Okay, so now we've taken this a little more complicated condition. We've parsed it up to express the set of companies precisely in set notation. Now, I just might mention before we do the calculation, we could actually go back and translate conditions that are given like this in set notation back into English. Well, let's do one of those. Let me just write down something right here. Supposing we say D union C prime intersect L. I don't know what this is going to mean, but we can write it back out. So what does this mean? So D means a dividend yield of more than 3%. So this is going to be companies with a dividend of more than 3%. I'll just start to use some math notation here. Or, so I probably should have said either at some place up here. Or what? Or they cost, they did not cost less than $50, or the price was uh, at least $50 per share. I guess like that. And the L meant that they, where was the L here? Oh, they had a positive growth last year. Had a positive growth uh, last year. Okay, so uh, the point of this is to show that you can go from uh, conditions given in the English language to make them precise in terms of the set language, but if you're faced with a description in set language, you can also go back and write uh, out what it means in English. Okay, in the next video, we'll go through and calculate some of these.